So Stefan Sindoni, he's a researcher, a truth seeker. You've heard him here on Coast to Coast several times. And from an early age, he was an avid reader. He spent much of his time learning about American history and ancient civilizations and religions and Greek mythology. And, of course, he's got this quest to uncover ancient truths. And he came to a realization that we, he was an old soul living in a new embodiment. And we're going to hear about all these really cool things that he has discovered along the way and he has found out along the way. Why? Because he's actually went out and done it. Maybe he does research with books and different things like that, too. But he goes out and does it. And that's what I suggest you guys do as well. When you have these questions, don't bombard us that have seen it and done it ourselves. Go out there yourselves. Go check it out. Come on. Come on. (laughs) Be brave. Let's make it happen. So Stefan has um, lots of different videos out there. He's a documentarian as well. Check out his videos. He's uh, got a lot of great things to look at and learn, and he's been all over the place. And one of the areas that I want him to really get into and teach me and teach you guys is underground. Is it a possibility? Again, hollow earth and maybe different civilizations. I don't know. Let, let's, let's, let's find out from him. So, Stefan, welcome to Coast to Coast. It was so great meeting you on the phone. We have so many similarities, and um, I'm looking forward to the stories you're telling us tonight. Well, I thank you, Connie, again, for having me on. I'll just give a quick little opening as to really who I am, a snapshot. Sure. I am Stephen Sindoni, longtime Hollow Earth researcher with a number of websites out there, Hollow Earth Exposed for one. And I am a seeker of truth, as you mentioned. In around 2007, I was first introduced to a book called The Smoky God, A Voyage to the Inner World, and it's a story about a father and son's account of their voyage into an inner world where they were received and rescued by giants who they spent two years with these inhabitants and visited the original Garden of Eden. Olaf uh, provided uh, maps and drawings to author Willis George Emerson on his deathbed. He waited until he was almost you know, dead before... He shared this story. So The Smoky God is a voyage in a world in the book presented as a true account written by author Willis George Emerson in 1908. So this didn't happen that long ago. And it describes the adventures of Olaf Jansen, a Norwegian sailor who sailed with his father to an entrance in the north interior into the the inner earth. And I was enthralled by by the story. As a child, I remembered the reading about Jules Verne's novels, Journey to the Center of the Earth. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that piqued my interest, where I felt compelled. After reading this story in the book, you know, I decided I was going to narrate it in 2011 and add it to one of my YouTube channels, because I was really, you know, I was, I was just mesmerized by it. And I said, you know, this is going somewhere I don't know yet. But I want to go research it. So in 2014, I was contacted by a fellow Hollow Earth researcher whose name is Chris Baird. And he asked that I investigate the life of Norwegian sailor Olaf Jansen and to figure out if Olaf was a figment of author Willis George Emerson's imagination or was he truly a man that went on his journey to the inner world. So with that information, I said, okay, I'm going to go into the library and do what I do and investigate the life of Olaf uh, Jansen. I had just recently done researching the life of uh, a Stockton mystery, the legend of J.C. Brown, and I was able to discover that the man of the legend was really by the name of John Benjamin Body of the Lord Cowdray Mining Company, and he was the man for 90 years or so that the Stockton record was trying to figure out who was this man who shows up in 1934 talking about giants. So I was able to recently solve that. While I'm solving that, I was putting the Stockton Record newspaper about, you know, uh, that I solved that Chris had called me and said, can you do me a favor? He goes, I need you to do this. I looked, you know, my friend who was there in the room, I says, you want me to do this? He says, yeah. He goes, because you have the ability. I just have a feeling that you're going to find out some things about this story. And plus you did the narration of it. And a couple years after I did the narration, the audio books, uh, LibriVox, I believe it was, they actually did uh, the book as well. So there's like a couple of versions out there, but I initially was the one who put it out on YouTube for other people to pick up on it, and I'm glad that I did. And uh, this story is 
all of Janice's personal account of his voyage in the world, which got him locked up by his uncle Gustav Osterlin, and he was who was a man of considerable wealth, but Olaf was incarcerated for twenty eight years for telling mm. his story about Ugh. what happened in his travels with his father in the inner earth. So Olaf, you know, while he's in prison for this twenty eight years now, he decides he's gonna create maps, drawings, write his memoirs and write his book. So at the age of fifty one, you know, in eighteen sixty two, he's now released from from this madhouse that he was in for 28 years, wrongfully, you know, committed. And he dared not say anything to anyone. So what he did was he waited his whole life till after he retired. He went out to work with, doing what he knew what he did best. He was a sailor, a Norwegian sailor. He went back out for about five years, worked for someone, uh, Jans, Jansen. And then after that, for 22 years, he bought his own ships and he sailed all over the world, and he made a fortune. At the end of 22 years, he's now retired. He decides to sell all his boats and come to America, which he does. And he spends 12 years in Chicago area before moving on to Los Angeles in 1902. In 1908, he decides uh, he's going to tell his deathbed story, and he, he meets a man by the name of George, uh, Willis George Emerson, who befriends him. In around the year, uh, was it 1906, and they become friends. And then within a couple of months later, he gets a phone call by messenger. Actually, a messenger comes and gives him a note and saying, "I'm dying. You need to come here now. You need to hear my story." So, Emerson, Willis George Emerson goes to the home of Olaf Jansen to hear his deathbed confession. And before you go any further, we'll be right back to tell you that information. I love the fact that. His name was Willis. Yeah, you all caught that, right? Hey, everybody, you're listening to Coast to Coast AM. Connie Willis here talking with Stefan Sindoni. Stay with us. This is going to be fantastic stuff tonight. Welcome back to Coast to Coast AM. Hi, everybody. I'm Connie Willis. Hope you're having a good evening. Good morning. We're talking with Stefan Sindoni, and Stefan was getting right to the climax, right to the final part of his story. So, Stefan, I'm just going to let you step on in and go at it and catch us back up where we were. Okay, well, uh, the year is 1907, and uh, author Willis George Emerson meets uh, Olaf Jansen in uh, California and becomes friends with him. And... uh, gets summoned uh, a couple of months later to the house of uh, Olaf Jansen to hear his deathbed confession about what really happened. And when he was summoned to the home, uh, he uh, was told by uh, Olaf that people need to know the truth. And this was Olaf's dying wish, and he would give him all the maps and drawings that he did uh, throughout the time he was incarcerated to share with the world what he learned on his voyage, and he was very, very concerned that it wouldn't be put out until he died, because he said, I spent 28 years in prison in Irons, and I know this won't happen to you, author Willis George Emerson, but I don't want it to happen to me again, because here I am for sharing my story with uh, the uh, ship mm-hmm. captain, Angus McPherson, from the whaling ship, he immediately put me in irons and uh, kept me in irons until I got all the way back to uh, uh, Norway, where Sweden, where I came from, uh, Stockholm. And uh, when I told my family and my uncles w- what happened and where I was, I had a rich uncle uh, named uh, Gustav Osterlin. And initially, his uncle was, you know, happy to hear his stories. And he took him to some officials, and I'm sure Olaf showed some of the drawings and maps that he had. And not long after, his uncle Gustav had him committed to a madhouse for 28 long years. Mm. Isn't that something? And you know, you know that later we're talking with Dr. Hasseltine that's going to uh, talk about how you cope with when you see these things and how you cope with how other people react. So it's amazing. Uh, you had pointed that out to me as well. That's amazing that that is threaded in like that. So. Because you think about it, because what he told the uh, the author is that in, not only with his drawings of the inner earth, the ma- he has maps of the inner world, and he said the world's geography is incomplete, and the true home of Apollo is in the inner world and where the Hyperboreans Hop- lived. So all these stories of antiquity mm. may not be myths or legends. They may be actual truths. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, when I tell you, when we get to why I, I'm making this uh, uh, statement now, you realize that something happened very sinister in our country's history, and I'm going to bring it to light. And why Columbus's name should not be the name that we remember for discovering America. All of Jansen's name should be known for discovering the inner world. And this is what my hope is going to be, because once I share with you what happened to suppress this man's information, think about it. Today, in real world today, you see something, tragic event, you know, a false flag event, let's just say. I'll just throw it out there. And next thing you know, you're discredited. And you're put behind bars. And you know what people believe. They believe whatever newspapers print or what they tell them. So here's a man who doesn't want to go back to confinement. And he's not going to have this story come out until he closes his eyes for the long sleep. So when I'm reading this and watching, you know, watching this unfold, I'm saying, okay, what does a writer need? He needs solitude to write. If you're going to write a book, you better be able to have the peace of mind to do it. A lot of good books are written in prison. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You're right. Uh, it's just, you know, the funny thing is, is that you have all the time in the world, yet you don't have the time to do what you have to do. But Olaf said, "No, you you might have knocked me down, but you know, I'm like the weeble that wobbles. I'm going to get right back up." So when I'm reading the story, I says, "Wow, why do I feel so resonated with this man? What is it?" And then I realized that. By me taking on this story tonight, I am divinely directed and creatively connected. Because when I weave this all together masterfully, everybody listening is going to say, Stefan's got the goods. And we want Bring to it know on. Why. And Bring I'm it on. When we get there, why? Now, we talked about Olaf. One of the things I want to do right now, if I can, Connie, sure. I need to establish the timeline for all this. Because a lot of people listening, and they Absolutely. probably haven't watched the Smoky God, or, or even watched uh, my Smoky God revealed, revisited for my uh, my research to see what I determined upon reading the book and going into the library and actually rolling up my sleeves for a number of years to figure out is this fact or is it fiction? So, if I can briefly go into who Olaf Jansen was, this will help the audience there to understand really what I'm talking about and the significance of why I'm. I'm uh, making this point. Olaf was born on October 27th of 1811 on a fishing voyage. His mother and father were fishing, and he was born in a country called Uleborg. They put the uh, the party boat to shore, and his mother gave birth to him in a Russian country. So there was no birth certificate for him, but he was born on a fishing trip that the parents had gone to. They were uh, uh, fishing in the the Lafayette Islands, which is where Olaf was from. So this is something that, when he was born, and then he, uh, at age 14, he started going out with his father, Jans Jansen, on fishing trips. And some of the trips they would go to, they'd go to Lafayette Islands, and they would fish there, and uh, they, were, they were merchant seamen, they were fishermen. But one day, Olaf's life changed. His father set out for a fishing trip, but as they went on this fishing trip, they decided they were going to go a little further than they normally went. And they ended up going through uh, an inner world passage after going through some rocky waters and noticing conditions had changed. The weather was getting warmer. It wasn't getting colder the further north they went. And they were perplexed by this. Going through this opening, they ended up just drifting along. And what they saw was uh, um, penguins nine feet tall. They saw uh, giraffes that were like three times the size on the outside. They saw uh, Tyrannosaurus rex and all these animals that were supposedly extinct, living on the inside and thriving. They Mm. then went further, and uh, they were picked up, believe it or not, by an excursion party boat. Now, this is in 1829. There was no excursion party boats in America or in the world at that time. That didn't happen until the Bronze Age, until the shipbuilding took place. So here, the father and son are looking at this excursion line, or probably looked like one of the ones, uh, the carnival or something like that, and the ship came over, <clears throat> and what they did is they rescued Olaf and his father. They had some sort of a, cane, a crane conveyance that took this little sloop up the boat they were in and brought it on the ship. Olaf and his father were, like, surprised to see that the men who picked them up were giants. They were 12 feet in height. Wow. So now... 
one of them ended up speaking English. His name was Jules Galdea. And he took Olaf and his father under his wing, and he took them all over their inner world, and they even met with a high priest or the king of the inner world <clears throat> and explained how they got there. And uh, they were welcomed, and they asked them, you know, what is it they wanted to do? And they said, well, we want to stay here with you for a while. And they did. They stayed there a couple of years, and they went to cities like, believe it or not, the Garden of Eden. Wow. The Garden of Eden lies <laughs> the real within, deal. within the center of the earth. Now, another interesting thing is there's four rivers there. And if I mention the name of the rivers, it'll blow you away. One is uh, the Euphrates, the, the, uh, mm. the Gibbon. Uh, another one was uh, the... Uh, was it? There's two others here. But there's four rivers here. And what was interesting, though, is that they are in the Garden of Eden, and they get to see exactly what the world was supposed to be. And they're told that the inner world was where everything began. And then uh, Noah, you know, the story of Adam and Eve about leaving the garden, was mm -hmm. going to go to the outer world. They were doomed. They were, like, punished to send them out into the world that we live in on the outside, on the surface. So you, you, you listen to this, and you look, oh, wait a minute, you know, there's all these Bibles, all these versions, all these stories, oh, wait a minute, there is some truth somewhere here. The truth lies somewhere in the middle, or maybe this man has it all figured out. So here it is, I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, okay, so what are some of his other discoveries? He, he says that the center of gravity it's not at the North Pole. It's 150 miles below the surface. And that's why all these other explorers couldn't find the pole. And he cites some of their names, and he could have only done this one. He was incarcerated in confinement where they would give him books and everything. So he was following what was going on with the inner Earth. And he says, no, I beg to differ with you in your stories. No, there is no fixed North Pole. It's 150 miles below the surface. And from inside to, to outside, it's 300 miles surface. So when you get halfway down, you get to zero point. And there, as I mentioned, there were four rivers, Euphrates, the Pisan, the Gehan, and the Hedekel. And some of them are biblical. And what he claimed, that some of these explorers claimed, above the 60-degree latitude there, they said there were open water seas, and it was warm air there. So here they were. They were finding figures that were not normal in that area. So the open sea revealed to me that why? Well, like, through my research, I found out the deepest waters in the world are there in Baffin Bay, which is near Greenland. There are also the strongest currents there and the strongest winds. So this would explain why no one's able to venture in over there, because those conditions would make it very difficult without the right sort of ship to to, to traverse those waters. So that's another thing why this secret has been kept so long. Also, you've got the Russians and the United States, and they want to keep the secret. They don't want you to know that in Siberia, every other day, tusks are floating onto the Siberian waters that are from prehistoric or different things that were you know, washed out of that inner earth coming and landing on the Siberian waterfront there. So there are some interesting things here that have been discovered by that. So when I look at this book, The Smoky God Journey to the Inner Earth, I realize that the world's geography has got to be incomplete. Because if, this, if what this man is saying is correct, then he shouldn't be put in irons. He should be given a Nobel Prize for you know the things that happened to him, you know, wrongfully accused and put in jail. I can tell you the timeline. Olaf and his father were rescued on a ship. This is 1829. They're taken. They see all these places. And after about two years, the father gets homesick, and he wants to go home. So they, they, they meet again with the, the king of the world there, or the, the high priest there, and they told him of their wishes. And they said, well, we don't think you're going to be able to go back the way you came because of the waters and because you'll be going in the wrong direction. But... We'll give you your boat back and let you guys go. And they gave them gold and they gave them things to prove that they were in this inner world because they really, you know, cared about Olaf and his father. Now Olaf's father stood six foot six, so you can imagine how small he looked in front of the giants who were twelve to fourteen feet tall. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting, and the Bible talks about giants as well. And that's yeah, a lot of research yeah. about giants. So 
You look at this, okay, show me the proof. Where is the proof? What do you have? Okay, so here's where we get to that. So Olaf now, him and his father decide they want to come back. They try to go back the way that they came, to the North Passage opening, but they could. it took them three months to try to go nowhere. So they decided they were going to go south. Now, the rivers I mentioned run north and south, and they run to the pole openings or the aperture in the south pole. So they decided they were going to try to traverse the south pole. When they get to the south pole opening, they find conditions are very difficult, and the father and son are in a storm there on the, uh, the South Sea, I believe, there in Antarctica. And the father gets knocked off the sloop. He ends up getting lost at sea. The son mm. tries to save his father, but he can't. So now he's left on an iceberg, right? Just him and the iceberg. His father's dead. He's freezing. Like, what do I do? I've got no food. I've got nothing. My sloop, my boat has just capsized. Woe is me. Luckily for him, a ship, the Arlington, a Scottish whaling ship, saw him. On the iceberg, they came over and they picked him up. Could you imagine? I mean, come on, there's something to that. That's yeah. like, come on. Well, this gets better, Connie, because they pick him up. Angus McPherson, wow. now he is the ship captain, right? right? And his job is whaling, his commerce, that's what he does. He asked Olaf, he goes, well, how did you get out here? This iceberg, there's nobody around. You're in the end of the earth. So Olaf tells them the true story about what happened to him and his father. So they says, all right, you know, put your hands behind your back. What are you talking about? Uh. So they, the captain, Angus McPherson, thought he was crazier than a bed bug, and he says, you're going to be confined for this whole trip until we get you back home to Norway. Wow. You know, unless you change your story, he goes, I'm not taking the handcuffs off. <laughs> so it was because he thought he was nutty. It wasn't because he knew something he didn't want uh, to get out there. Yeah, I think it was because he thought he was uh, crazy as a bed bug. I mean, oh. that sort of a story... If it's not your perception, you may not want to believe it, especially if it is this magnitude. Olaf's quote, and I'll quote him now in the book, he says, the truth is stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. So Olaf Mm -hmm. knew that after he told the story to the ship's captain, he was going to have a hard time getting back to his country. So he gets back four years and eight months from the day that he and his father left. Here it is almost five years later, and he finds out his family is dead. And his property's been sold. He comes home. He finds. And we want to hear. And we want to hear that when we come back. I don't want to miss a thing. This is great. I tell you what. I love the story. Stefan is awesome at telling it too. And man, I can't wait to get to all the questions I have too about what's going on in that inner world, what it looks like, how they got there, how you get in and out. And even though I told a little bit of that, I've got some deeper questions. So stay with us, you guys. You're listening to Coast.